All right. And we are live. Welcome to today's Wednesday Q&A Live. It is... We're just getting going here. It is Wednesday, May the 12th, 2000. Wednesday Q&A Live. I am David Reineshek, the founder of JuiceFeasting.com. Katrina is usually with me on these calls, but today she's taking some time to remember a really dear friend to our family who recently passed away, a matriarch in our communities here. And so I am going to be running the Q&A today, and we have excellent questions. So welcome to today's Q&A. We're going to talk about juice feasting. Juice feasting, as I've said many times, I credit with saving my life. It has saved the life and improved the life of hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm really honored to be here with you today on our live call to take your questions. So in the next 30 to 60 minutes, I will take your questions by text right here on Facebook Live and answer them. Um, if you're watching this later on, look for the questions and answers below also, and we'll post this on our website with a brief write-up of the questions and some of the responses in more detail. Um, we're running this Q&A this week for everyone. In a few weeks, we're going to run this for members only for the most part. Every once in a while, we'll have a Q&A for everybody. But today, we're doing it for everybody, and then we're going to shift to members. So today, you can get personal guidance. You can stay on track with your health needs and your health goals. You can get to know other members that are in our site um, by coming on these. So bring your questions. I love doing this. When I worked for Dr. Cousins at the Tree of Life Rejuvenation Center, I would hold court with 40 or 50 people in an office that actually went right out onto the patio outside of Dr. Cousins' office and run Q&As for two or three hours. I love doing this. I love the format. So happy for you to come. I've got some questions lined up. So while we're waiting for people to come into the room, I will address those also. New things on juicefeasting.com. We are in the sixth or seventh generation of juice feasting because the internet keeps on interneting and upgrading. So we are in um, one of our latter editions now of juice feasting to continue to make it more accessible for everyone and continue to update the content. There is a new Q&A section that is coming. These Q&As will be part of that, but also text and images and so on will be part of that Q&A. In one of our first editions of Juice Feasting, we had a Q&A section that went on and on and on. You just kept on scrolling. And we're going to be placing those on the latest edition of JuiceFeasting.com. So watch for that. The other thing that's coming, monthly topics are coming for members. So things like detoxification and cleansing. Um, intermittent fasting we're going to do as a topic for a whole month, um, pain, uh, walking, which may sound like uh, that's a sleeper, but actually is not a sleeper um, activity at all. It's one of the most profound things you can do for your health. Looking at elements of beauty, liver and gallbladder health, uh, cardiovascular health, family health, um, things that you can do to design better for your own health. Looking at freedom and fullness in relationship to food, um, foods for the brain and the mind, core life practices, uh, foods from the gods is going to be a great topic for the month, um, fats, the spectrum of diet, men's health, women's health, and many more things will be in the offing. So just wanted you to know that those topics are going to be coming up. We're going to have private calls for members to discuss these topics in full. We'll be doing that month by month coming out here pretty soon. So just want you to look ahead for that. And if you're seeing this later on, it's probably already running and you'll be able to find a page that has all of those topics recorded and detailed so that you can access that content as a new member. So all that's coming. Topics today, questions today. I'm going to go ahead and start into those while I'm waiting for comments to start um, coming up on our on our call and I'm just making sure that things are set so that everybody can um, write in. So hold on just a moment, I'm just setting something up here and it looks like we are set. Okay, so uh, questions that have already come in in advance of today's call. I'm waiting for some other comments or questions to come in. First one was the difference
that you can access. First, I just want to mention, zinc is a major topic on the 92 module um, nutrition mastery program on juicefeasting.com. And I've made it such an important topic and written a long research file on it that's available to members because zinc is so important for a few things. One, it's a major asset in reducing inflammatory markers in your body. And so many things have inflammation as a component. One of the major benefits that we get from juice feasting is a significant reduction in inflammatory markers across the board in our body. It's just a huge anti-inflammatory benefit. So things that you can do to dial that or improve that a bit better in your daily life beyond juice feasting, it's taking something like zinc. Now zinc you can get through these forms, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, so you can do it supplementally. You can also eat zinc rich things. In the plant world, one of your best sources of zinc is pumpkin seeds. When I'm making a nut or a seed milk, which I'll make with hemp seeds, almonds, Brazil nuts, which have a lot of selenium, also an anti-inflammatory agent, anti-inflammatory mineral, I will put in plenty of pumpkin seeds in there as well. Just blend them down, blend it on high for about a minute. And that works beautifully. So zinc is going to benefit you there. And as we get older, our assimilation of nutrients like zinc tends to wane a bit. So supplementing or getting in more foods like Pumpkin seeds is going to help you a lot to keep that anti-inflammatory benefit going. It benefits male prostate health. So if you're a man, you don't want to get low in zinc. And for all of us, men and women, zinc feeds the parietal cells that line the stomach. And those parietal cells that line the stomach produce stomach acid. And the stronger your stomach acid is, the better that you break down proteins and then assimilate those amino acids, which your body puts back together and builds your organs and your tissues and everything. It does repair work. So zinc's really important for strengthening your stomach acid for that reason. It's also super important because strong stomach acid means that bacteria out by that if the stomach acid is strong enough. But as we get older, stomach acid production tends to wane. And one of the reasons for that is our zinc production is a bit too low. So when we take on more zinc, we feed the parietal cells, we create more stomach acid, and that burns out aberrant things that otherwise would get into our intestinal tract, get into our bloodstream, and possibly cause illness. If you're somebody who suffers chronic colds and flus, right, you get the sniffles a lot, you have seasonal allergies, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, you wanna get zinc on board to strengthen your stomach acid. That actually may be the core issue there for you in terms of your seasonal allergies or the colds and flus you get. It's things are getting through the stomach and then into the intestinal tract and into your bloodstream that should have been knocked out in your stomach acid while you were eating. So zinc is going to strengthen that. And before I mention about what are the great forms of zinc um, other than pumpkin seeds, um, something else that you can do to strengthen your stomach acid is to take apple cider vinegar. Now, I'm sure you've heard of apple cider vinegar at this point, but taking one or two tablespoons and putting it in a small glass of water and knocking that back a few minutes before you eat will strengthen your digestive fire and keep um, In terms of the forms, uh, zinc chelate, Uh, it's a fine form. If you're taking it on a regular basis, you most likely are going to get all the zinc that you need between that and eating a good diet with plenty of plants, okay? Eating a good whole foods diet. If you want to increase your zinc assimilation, um, you want to go to a zinc chelate. Chelate means that the zinc is attached to a compound that actually makes that zinc more soluble in water and more available to your body. The two forms that you want to be looking for, zinc picolinate, it's probably your best, or zinc citrate. Okay, so if you can find zinc picolinate or zinc citrate, those are highly assimilable forms of zinc. Now I'll mention one other, and any of these are gonna be fine. So zinc picolinate, zinc citrate, if you could only find zinc gluconate, which is a more over-the-counter kind of version of it that you'd find at almost any drugstore, that's okay. If you're taking consistently, you should get enough zinc in. But you can take an angstrom form of zinc, I learned about this from Dr. Cousins working in his clinic, working as his research assistant, doing my master's program in vegan life food nutrition, 
We learned about Mother Earth minerals. They make angstrom forms of zinc that are already in water that are a very small form that ends up getting into the body really easily. It's a very bioavailable form of zinc. So if you want to look into Mother Earth minerals and their angstrom zinc, you can take that as directed and that's a great way to go too. Okay, consistency is key, having a whole foods diet, getting in plenty of zinc rich foods, and even taking things like apple cider vinegar, which will help your assimilation of nutrients across the board because you've strengthened your digestive fire. So a little bit of a moderately long answer on that question, but I've done that because zinc is such an important element and I want you to have that information. Next one is, what is MSM? Like, what does it do? MSM is a sulfur compound. Um, it's, it was actually discovered in trees. Trees concentrate sulfur. And many decades back, it was discovered that people who worked at paper mills strangely didn't have any arthritic hands or a lot of problems with arthritis. And that's because sulfur in your body acts as a significant anti-inflammatory. Now, I'm going to double click on this here. MSM, as far as a supplement goes, is the premier anti-inflammatory agent that I use in my practice as a juice feasting coach. It's the number one. And the reason for that is not that gram for gram it's the most powerful anti-inflammatory, but it's because MSM is completely non-toxic. You can't take a toxic dose of it. Uh, if you took more than your body knows how to use, you'll either pee it out, poop it out, or you'll burp it out in a gaseous form, but it won't hurt you. So when I'm working with a client who's got serious pain issues, tightness issues, scarring anywhere in the body, whether it be the kidneys from long-term diabetes, the cardiovascular system from long-term high blood sugar, or an injury of any kind, some kind of a scarring in the system, the MSM is going to break down that scar tissue and help your tissues become more supple. Also helps with things like rosacea. I've worked with plenty of clients who've had rosacea. One change, MSM, without even changing their diet or their lifestyle or anything, the MSM gets in there and helps the uh, tissues in the face and settles down that inflammation because that's what rosacea is, is an inflammatory process. So MSM is the most powerful anti-inflammatory that I use in my coaching because I can keep dialing it for the client and dialing it and dialing it. Diabetic clients, my clients who have hypoglycemia, my clients who have candidiasis, meaning a yeast overgrowth in their system from too much sugar for whatever reason, benefit hugely from MSM because um, MSM, when you take it, causes those cells to be more permeable or more receptive to insulin, but also more permeable to all the nutrients that you're taking into your body that need to get into those cells. When someone's diabetic, for example, they have an insulin resistance. It means the insulin is coming to the door of that cell, so to speak, knocking at it and saying, I'm here with some carbohydrate, do you want it? And a cell that's resistant won't answer the door, won't take up that carbohydrate, and the carbohydrate stays in the bloodstream, and that's what we call high blood sugar. When you take MSM, you improve the receptivity of those muscle cells to answer the door when insulin comes a knock and, and says, I've got some carbohydrate, would you like it? This gets the carbohydrate out of the blood and into the muscle cells where it's its destination. Hugely beneficial, okay? MSM is going to improve your assimilation though of nutrients across the board, whether it's zinc or selenium or certain proteins, vitamin B12, anything, okay? Hugely beneficial. I have a whole day dedicated to MSM in the Nutrition Mastery course on juicefeasting.com. The 92 module course, it's day 11. It's one of the most fun researches I ever did. So definitely check it out. Um, as invaluable as ever, right? Since the beginning of my work. What are EFA? So I've got another question. Oh, let's see. All right, we've got Katharina writing in. She says her call is coming in a little bit um, intermittent. But um, let's see. She says, just wanted to ask, is drinking kombucha okay while you're juice feasting? Uh my, my answer is yes, it can be okay. However, if you're dealing with blood sugar related issues, whether it's hypoglycemia or candida, um, if you feel like you've got sleep disorders, if you've got a really strong craving for bread, uh, wheat, um, high sugar foods, like you're just like, ah, I just can't get enough. You probably want to stay away from kombucha. Okay. Um, kombucha has, still has sugar in it. Now it's been 
converted some into vinegar, but there's still sugar content. There's alcohol content, which is a mycotoxin. So a little bit of that's gonna be okay, but if you've already got some issues you're trying to resolve in terms of inflammation, digestive distress, candida, um, uh, other things that I mentioned, you wanna stay away from kombucha. Kombucha does have really good probiotics for you though. So a little bit of kombucha from the probiotic standpoint and from the vinegar standpoint, which strengthens digestive fire, can be a nice thing in really small amounts. So if you're feeling like, no, generally speaking, I mean, I'm doing pretty okay. I've got some weight to lose or a few little scores to settle, but I'm doing good on my juice feast. I'd like to have just a little bit of kombucha. You could do okay with that. Have it in the afternoon. For most of my clients though, I tell them leave kombucha out of the equation until after the juice feast. Let's go ahead and move the ball up the field as efficiently as we can. And we'll bring in kombucha later because it might be a nice little addition in an overall dietary and lifestyle approach. Okay. All right. When I, regular practice on your juice feast. You would prefer to use coconut water, maybe in your Vitamix or mixed into some of your green vegetable juices, because you want the full complement of nutrients that you're getting from those 12 to 15 pounds of produce that you're juicing down into a gallon of juice, okay? Or it's seven to eight kilos of produce, if you're over in the rest of the world other than the United States, seven or eight kilos of produce into four liters of juice. You want all of those nutrients, the dynamic range of nutrients that you get. And when you have something like coconut water, even if you put some vitamin mineral green in there, it's just not as dynamic and alive, which is super important, as you're getting from fresh green vegetable juice. So my encouragement for my clients, for everybody that I teach and coach, is that coconut water is a little thing on the side that you have with your juice feast. Like it could be in between juices. You've gone for a walk or a run, right? And you're like, oh, this would be wonderful. It's a hot day. Or... You pour it into your Vitamix as your water in the bottom of the Vitamix and add all of your produce and just blend that in and strain it. And the coconut water is mixed in with the rest of your green vegetable juice. That being said, if you're in a pinch, something like coconut water can be perfect. I've had plenty of clients. I've had my own cases where I maybe made enough juice for the day, but I'm out and about and I am just jonesing for something. I'm like, it's got to be juice and I can't quite get to a fresh juice but because grocery stores keep evolving, I can run into the grocery store and get a good coconut water in a glass jar or a box, and I can drink that knowing, okay, I'm gonna be home in a little bit. Excellent, excellent question. And you're right to wanna to mix in vitamin mineral green. to make with um, coconut water is just coconut water and a good tablespoon of spirulina blended down into that. Spooned in, it doesn't mix up very well, but if you've got a high-speed blender, just put the coconut water in there, start it spinning, get a little vortex going, and then just take your tablespoon of spirulina, dump that in there, and it'll mix in in seconds. And then you can pour that into your quart-sized jar or what have you and drink that down. Those two are like a match made in heaven, spirulina and coconut. Off the juice feast, you can buy young coconuts and take out the young coconut meat and pour in the young coconut water and then add something like spirulina and blend that down into just a coconut smoothie. Mwah! Just delicious. Also, cacao is really good in there. Yeah. All right, Katerina, thank you for those questions. I've got one more from you, and then I'm going to keep going with the other questions that we've got written in um, prior to the call. I'm on day 30 now. So, let's stop right there. Congratulations. For everybody watching this, don't think that if you've made it 30 days, and just because I've designed this to go for 92 days, potentially, that 30 days, like, oh, I'm just getting started. Well, for your health, maybe you are just getting started. But let me tell you, 30 days of juice feasting is a significant um, uh, accomplishment. I just had a client finish up with me who'd been trying to juice feast longer than three to five days for years. And he finally hired me and he said, I'm hiring you because I need to break through. And I, I feel like I need you in my corner. I need you as an asset so that I can stay consistent enough to move through 30 days of juice feasting because I know I need it. And he did move beautifully through 30 days. I mean, we went from strength to strength. And that's one of the 
best benefits that I provide my clients. It's keeping you on point day to day to day, all the way through your juice feast, keeping it interesting, keeping it exciting, answering your questions so that you know that you're on track and doing it really, really well. I've got some sunlight coming in, shining off my face. So um, day 30 is a significant accomplishment, Katerina. She said, yesterday I had huge bloating, have no idea what from, would the enema help? Okay, well the bloating might not be down in the colon, it might be in your intestinal tract. So there's a couple of things that you can do here. Apple cider vinegar would be a great choice. So put that in some water and drink that. You could also do some betonite clay. Betonite clay will absorb some of the things that are producing gas. So tablespoon of hydrated betonite in about 10 ounces of water, stir that in, drink that. Things like uh, ginger can help with bloating. Also mint tea, that would be a great idea. If you've been using sauerkraut in your juices, you might want to back off the sauerkraut for a day or two and just see if that changes things for you. Also with bloating, I would look at the combinations that you're using for your juices. It may be that if you've got a lot of fruit and you have a lot of root vegetables in your juices at the same time, or if you're doing something like orange and carrot together, that that's causing some kind of a temporary dysbiosis and you're getting bloating from that. So I would look into that. An enema may help. It could be that the bloating is further down, down into the large intestine. And if that's the case, doing an enema will definitely help. Um, you could try a teaspoon of baking soda and water in between your juices. You could try it first thing in the morning. That kind of alkaline buffer in your system may be just what you need to go ahead and reduce the bloating a little bit. And then I'm gonna mention one other thing, and that is fasting for a day. It can be a phenomenal idea to take one day in, in your juice feast, and you're 30 days in now, take one day and just drink salt water. Even if you just in green room, and you can find my recipe for electrolyte water, which has sodium and potassium in it. It's basically Himalayan salt, baking soda, and then something that you can get in the salt section of the grocery store. Keeps your sodium potassium levels balanced and makes a day of fasting super easy, particularly in the midst of a juice feast. That one day break from juice may be all your system needs to resettle your microbiome and your intestinal tract, sweep some things on through, and the next day bring in Keep me posted on that though. Not uncommon to experience some bloating in the midst of a cleanse, like a juice feast, given all of the juices that we're drinking. So keep all those things in mind. Outstanding question, thank you. All right, next questions here. And we're about 25 minutes in. Okay, very good. And we're just getting going with all the questions that have been submitted. What EFAs are best for daily use? So first of all, EFAs are essential fatty acids. We get essential fatty acids from a whole lot of plants. You get them from animal products too. Um, essential fatty acids can be difficult to get in our diet. Americans in particular, that's where I'm from, we don't tend to get enough essential fatty acids in through our diet because it's too processed. Um, it's not organic. And EFAs, essential fatty acids, are a special emergent in the plant and animal world in terms of things being upgraded to these fats. They are essential. The ones we're wanting to focus on the most are EPA and DHA. Now I'm not going to say the names of those as it's too long, but EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are significant for brain health, bone health, skin health, immune function, transmitter balance. They affect your vitality as a person. That would mean just your general joie de vivre for life, also sexual vitality your creative vitality. It's a lot of things going on with essential fatty acids. If you're eating a plant-based diet 100%, you want to focus in on this for sure. If it's diminished. You want to double back and double click on EPA and DHA and look at how to get these in if you're on a plant-based approach or on an integrative approach. Plant-based, you're going to get some really good omega-3 fats that your body can convert into EPA and DHA from nuts and seeds, notably hemp seeds and flax seeds. 
Okay, hemp seeds are my favorite because flax can tend to send men's hormones into more of an estrogenic state, whereas hemp seeds don't do that. So there's a good option there. Supplementally, here's the thing. If you're of Scandinavian heritage or you're getting on more than 40 years of age, your body may not convert regular fats, omega-3 fats, into the special omega-3 fats called EPA and DHA. And that's going to diminish your function in some cases like across the board. And you just need more EPA and DHA. If you're eating a plant-based approach, you can find plant-based from algae, algae sourced EPA and DHA. If you go to juicefeasting.com slash shop, you can find in the supplement section the plant sourced EPA and DHA that I'm speaking to. If you are eating an integrative diet and you're looking to get an EPA and DHA, you're going to get some through your animal products, but you can also get it in through fish oil. So if you're doing an integrative approach with some animal products, you could go that way. I have had clients over the years that I've coached to eat plant-based, like 100%, but they've said, you know what? I recognize how important EPA and DHA is to me, and I'm not really wanting to take it in the capsule from a supplement. I'm wanting to get it through a food source. And so they say, I'm all vegan, but I do this fish oil. So, you know, everybody's got their own ways of doing things, but fish oil can be an excellent source. If you're doing, if you're going that route, one to two tablespoons a day, the fish oil will do it. Um, but EPA and DHA can be sourced from algae and you can get that as a supplement. So check out juicefeasting.com slash shop and you can see what I recommend there. Okay. Sean B writes, is mucoid plaque real? Outstanding question. It's not a term that I use, but uneliminated waste matter, which has a number of different components in it. Mucus, proteins, bacteria, undigested foods, this does build up in the intestinal tract and colon and can build up to many pounds over the years, limiting your assimilation of nutrients through the wall of the small intestine, where if you didn't know it, we absorb 90% of our nutrients through the wall of the small intestine. So if that's got like a rubber sheet on it, like mucoid plaque or uneliminated waste matter, if that's compromised, you're going to suffer some malnourishment, right? So that's important to resolve. Juice feasting does that. Um, so it is real. Uh, but I don't use the term because some people say, oh, it's not exactly, I'm not going to get into the semantics of it. There's uneliminated waste matter. And I haven't had anybody in the health profession deny that we've got uneliminated waste matter in the intestinal tract and colon. Years. I like to joke with my clients and students who've been into a juice feast for long enough. I'll ask, have you seen any childhood? In there. You see a lot of stuff come out. Now, Sean writes, average time on a juice feast until you see it. Well, you're seeing stuff come out in the first few days of doing a juice feast. So that unlimited waste matter is starting to come forth. How old is it? Well, it's a mixed bag. Some of it's just a few days old, a few weeks old. Some of it might be months or years old in certain cases. You can have diverticuli that are pockets in the large intestine where unlimited waste matter gets stuck in those little pockets and can't get back out very easily. And it can be months or years old. This can create colon cancer, for example. It's the precondition for colon cancer. So something like juice feasting allows that stuff to get washed out, to get cleaned out of the large intestine, okay? Um, so how long are you gonna take to see it? Well, you're seeing it almost right away. But in terms of seeing stuff like the pictures that you've probably seen online of these like long ropey things, you may or may not see that at all. And it's not that it wasn't in your system, but a lot of that gets broken down and liquefied and just comes out with everything else as you're juice feasting. So you may not see those long ropey things occur and that's fine, it doesn't matter. Just keep knowing that what you're doing is the right thing to do and that your body is moving everything out in a timely manner exactly as it's supposed to. So trust your body's wisdom. As lovely as it might be to get a picture of that kind of stuff and be able to post it somewhere and go, look what came out of me. You know what? What you really wanna see is the change in your face, the change in your physique, the change in your level of health. question. Um, you also ask, what's your term? Um, in a nutshell, it is a whole foods integrative diet that um, integrates intermittent fasting and one meal a day practices, but intermittent fasting in a nutshell. 
So whole foods diet, we have moved from whole foods to vegetarian to vegan to raw vegan and have moved forth from there into an integrative approach. Now, I know that some of my raw vegan colleagues or raw vegan folks out there would think that's some kind of backsliding or whatever. That's a conversation we can have another day. I have found that for health maintenance and health improvement, particularly in the environment that I live in here in British Columbia, having been from Texas and Arizona, that's where I grew up, um, that an integrative approach to nutrition is absolutely the best diet for me, using that and intermittent fasting and some juice feasting to maintain my health over time. So looking at a whole constellation of life practices being brought together is incredibly important for me to maintain um, and improve upon my health over time in this environment. Many, many people who've eaten vegan and raw vegan have moved into some sort of an integrative approach, even if it's just a small amount of animal products, after years of being devoted or dedicated to plant-based. So that's a conversation for another day, and I love having it, but I'll keep it short right now. We eat a whole foods integrative diet using intermittent fasting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Lillian writes, what juices or regimen could you use for grass or pollen allergies? It's very topical at this time of year. Definitely the grass and the pollen is coming up as we get into spring. So I've got a few that you can write down right now. Here's number one, orange, ginger, turmeric, a little bit of raw honey, lemon, and apple cider vinegar. You won't go wrong on the amount of almost any of these except for the raw honey. I'd encourage you to keep it to about a teaspoon or so, okay? But on the orange, the ginger, the turmeric, the lemon, um, you're not going to go overboard on that. In terms of the apple cider vinegar, probably around a tablespoon for this mixture. Make up about a pint of that and drink that. That is phenomenal for boosting your immune function and also limiting inflammation. So when we have grass or pollen allergies, one of the things that can be going on is that for one reason or another, needs something else to tip it over the edge where we're like, oh my gosh, I'm really suffering from these allergies. But you had a low level or a moderate level inflammatory process going on prior to the arrival of spring and pollen and uh, grass allergies. So looking at how can I basically um, get the water out of my bucket, basically reduce the inflammatory markers in my system so that then when the grass or pollen comes in and, and increases my inflammation a little bit, it doesn't push me over the top. So something like orange, ginger, raw honey, turmeric, lemon, and apple cider vinegar as a pint-sized drink is going to help to reduce those inflammatory markers. Another juice that's really great, um, parsley, cucumber, green apple, and mint. Uh, parsley acts like a diuretic, and that's not a bad thing in the context of a really hydrating diet. And when your body is flushing water on through itself, it will flush histamines through. So this acts like a histamine blocker or something that actually gets histamines out of your system. Um, parsley is also a flavonoid, and flavonoids are anti-inflammatory. So again, as we're trying Quercetin, that's a reducer of cortisol. Cortisol levels go up when we are stressed or when we need to take action on something. But chronic stress or chronic need of taking action can increase cortisol levels to the point that we've got inflammatory markers that are really high. And in that case, we need to do something about reducing cortisol. Quercetin will help to do that and reduce inflammation in general. Mint that's in this juice is a decongestant. Okay, um, It's also great for the health of your stomach. So if you've got allergies in combination with just feeling kind of queasy or off in your digestive system, mint will help to balance that, okay? So that's a great one. Last one is apple, pineapple, and kale, okay? Now, we've already talked about apple. Pineapple contains an enzyme called bromelain, and bromelain is a protein digesting or a protein splitting enzyme. That acts as an antihistamine, but it also breaks down excess proteins in our system, and this tends to reduce a mucus process and an inflammatory process, okay? So pineapple can be really great for that. And of course, kale, one of the most nutrient-dense greens that we can eat. So apple, pineapple, kale can be great. You could also add to that though, turmeric, ginger, orange, uh, even apple cider vinegar, okay? So you could go with the first recipe that I talked about with those ingredients, plus some pineapple and kale, okay? Mix it up. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention on taking care of grass or pollen allergies, which I didn't
technologies. All this fast. Histamines to reduce inflammation and to reduce that response to the pollen or um, the grasses. So consider that one strongly. There's a great reset that can happen just with a 24 or 48 hour fast done with salt water. Okay. All right. Katerina writes, thank you so much. And you know what? I don't know if you remember me from last week. The lump disappeared. It's not there. I also had some little something under my skin on my leg yesterday, and I felt nothing there too. And about two weeks ago, it was there. My husband thought that from finding out, I would start feasting with him. Well, he meant sausages and stuff. And I said, I'm definitely continuing till the middle of summer. I hope to resolve some pains and allergies too. Thank you. Katerina, that is a huge win. If you don't mind, I'm going to put that into our wins of the week blog that's on juicefeasting.com. We're still working on like building that out and getting that as a process going. But wins of the week, that is the destination for um, such uh, great results from your efforts so far from juice feasting. So congratulations. I'm so glad to read that. You have made my morning. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Lillian wrote. Pregnancy is a revolution in your body and how you feel as a woman. I experienced this firsthand or at least secondhand right from Katrina being pregnant with both of our children um, uh, in, in, in the many years um, uh, that we were pregnant and then also nursing. So look, the human body is going through a revolution both during the pregnancy, during childbirth, and for the period of nursing, which Katrina nursed for several years. A revolution. One of the ways to see that is, is once you get going into the second and third trimesters, I believe the body is putting out the energy that it would take to run a marathon every day. So if you wonder why you're tired, maybe just be the first trimester. But at any rate, there is a revolution going on. A, a marathon every day. So when you're thinking about that, it stands to reason that the body is going to go through some stages in terms of its relationship with food, what kind of nutrients it wants, and what kinds of foods that it will be okay with. So Katrina's not on today, so I'm going to have her speak to this when she gets on next week for our important because you want as dynamic a range of nutrients as possible while you're pregnant. Probably all of us who are listening to this call already know. juice may sound like the worst thing ever during your pregnancy, so don't feel bad about that. It's just the body saying too many alkaloids or too much something, and I can't do it. If you are feeling great about having green vegetable juice in preparation for pregnancy or during pregnancy, wonderful. Green smoothies can also be outstanding. They digest a little bit more slowly, help you with bowel movements, which can be constipation can be an issue while you're pregnant. And so smoothies may be your way to go um, over green vegetable juice. Could also be to go, no, I want something really light. I want something easy to digest and green vegetable juice is where it's at for me. But I just want to double click on this. Don't feel bad if green... Ask your body, what are you really craving? What are you really craving? Think about whole foods. What whole foods am I really craving? And design your menu around that. Katrina went through a brief period in one of her pregnancies where she only wanted white foods. It was odd. I mean, foods that she didn't normally eat in large quantities. She wanted potatoes, rice, um, yogurt, kefir, a bunch of stuff that was white. Really, really interesting. It's like, okay, we'll just roll with that. Maybe your body just needs something really calm and easy to digest and we're just gonna roll. And then after a few weeks of that, it was right back into a more dynamic range of nutrients. So Katrina's diet before our first pregnancy was juice feasting and a raw vegan approach. So we did the 2008 Global Juice Feast in Arizona, moved up here to British Columbia, and got pregnant a few months later after that. So Katrina had a good almost 90-day juice feast to prepare for pregnancy. Um, that's great. You know, Dr. Cousins has written in Conscious Eating and elsewhere, you could take two years to kind of tune your system up and prepare for being pregnant. I think that's a great idea. I wouldn't put off a pregnancy that long if you're feeling like, nope, the calendar just says 
it's time for us to go ahead and do this, right? The stage of life that I'm in, whatever it is, go ahead and do it. But even a few months can be great preparation, you know, before you get pregnant. The other question I'll answer here that you didn't ask is, what if I'm trying to get pregnant and I'm juice feasting right now? Is there a problem with that? No. In the first try, from nutrients that you've already eaten. So while you're juice feasting, you find out that you're pregnant and you go, okay, in the next day or so, I guess my juice diet that's appropriate for my pregnancy now. You don't want to keep juice feasting while you're pregnant. But if you juice feasted for the first few weeks of pregnancy, you didn't know that you were pregnant yet, perfectly safe, absolutely fine. I've had a number of clients over the years who found out they were pregnant during a juice feast and people who've reported to us through our blogs and through our website. I was trying to get pregnant. I juice feasted in preparation. Haven't been able to get pregnant. Got pregnant while I was juice feasting. Beautiful, wonderful congratulations. Um, other things that you could do during your pregnancy. Roots are very grounding. So I recommend that. So if you can make soup with roots, if you can make juices or smoothies with some root vegetables like carrot, parsnip, beet, sweet potato, right? Sweet potato is fantastic, has 72 different nutrients in it if it's organic, if it's an organic sweet potato. Um, Jerusalem artichoke, right? Those things can be fantastic, very, very grounding to your system. Also, and I mentioned it earlier in our Q&A today, EPA and DHA, those special omega-3 fats. So um, taking in EPA and DHA through a plant source, like an algae source if you want to get it in that way, or through fish oil. Now the question is, can I do fish oil while I'm pregnant? Is that dangerous to the fetus? If you're getting something like Carlson's fish oil, it has been tested like 150 different ways for um, anything like mercury or other toxins that might be in there. And it is safe for pregnancy as far as I'm concerned. Now, somebody else might want to argue differently, but I'm going to say as a pregnant woman, fish oil can be really valuable. When Katrina started taking fish oil during her first pregnancy, which is probably into the third trimester, that, in combination with a bit of yogurt, settled down what I call the jimmy legs. Katrina's six foot one. She's into her third trimester. She'd lay down on her side at night to go to sleep, and she'd get these electrical feelings through her legs. I started making her in the evening a banana, blueberry, kefir, yogurt, fish oil smoothie, and she drank that, and that settled the jimmy legs right down. Finally, like, figured that one out. And then I, when I took it away... The crazy legs of the Jimmy legs came back. So that was on board for us the rest of that first pregnancy. Yeah. And so there's an integrative approach right there, even though we had done raw vegan for a number of years. But that worked really, really well when nothing else did. And we tried so many things to get the Jimmy legs to like settle down for her. But that did it. That settled her nervous system. Okay, let's see here. B12 is the last thing I wanted to mention on pregnancy. Make sure you're getting inadequate B12. Methylcobalamin is a great great choice. So look up my B12 webinar on juicefeasting.com. It's there. It's a free presentation and you can learn everything that you'd want to know about vitamin B12. All right. Very, very good. All right. I'm looking for more questions coming in. Okay. While I'm waiting for some more questions to potentially come in, um, behind me, I have on the wall, these are our ultra lightweight sleeping bags. So I said last week, we are building up our gear in preparation for doing long distance backpacking trips. This is, every family's got their thing. Some people like to go out on boats. Some people have different kinds of travel they like to do. I walked the Appalachian Trail from end to end in 1999. That's 2,200 miles of backpacking over about a seven month period. And I love long distance backpacking. I love ultra lightweight backpacking because it makes the backpacking so much easier on the human body. And I'm training our children how to do this. And these are our packs right back here. And we're building up our gear. So these are ultra lightweight down sleeping bags that um, uh, we're going to be using on uh, the Appalachian Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail. So we are preparing ourselves to do that as soon as next year. We're going to be looking into that. Um, so uh, that's coming. Those sleeping bags just came in. Really excited about those. I'll probably do a call later on just to get anybody excited who Uh, let's see here. What else did I want to mention today?
Uh, the Dementors of your experience is a topic. I just wanted to run really quick while I'm waiting for any other comments to come on or questions to come on. If you watch the Harry Potter series, you know what the Dementors are. They were some kind of ethereal, black, um, uh, negative element in the Harry Potter universe that would come and suck your happy memories and basically suck your soul away. And I thought about those characters as an archetype in that storyline. And I was thinking, we have Dementors in our own experience. I think this is a nice lens that we can work with to think about our own lives and how we're designing our lives or the elements that are in our lives and think, are there certain things in my own experience that are Dementors for me that I could somehow design out of my lifestyle or protect myself from? Um, not in an antagonistic way necessarily, but you're like, no, I'm just going to do my life in a different way where these things are no longer an element in my orbit that are kind of sucking my energy away and preventing me in some cases or drawing down my attention or my energy or my excitement about doing things that I know will create a better life for myself or for my family or create a better world. And so there are a lot of Dementors that could be in your experience from scrolling to of media. I found for a few years during the Bush administration that learning more about what they were doing was a Dementor in my experience, and I turned the news off for a while. I was still tacitly aware of what was going on in the world, but I was like, click, I already know enough about what's going on in the world to know what I can do and encourage to make for a better world. And most of that was encouraging people to do life of nutrition and juice feasting. So I was like, hang up the phone, don't need to look at the news anymore. I know what to do. I know why I'm doing it, right? Um, a Dementor of your experience could be a relationship that you're in. could even just be somebody at work that you're like, I just keep getting trapped in conversations with this person and it's not going anywhere for me, right? It could be a worry that you have that you need to go ahead and resolve or drop. Maybe it's not a worry that you can do anything about. But I would encourage you as a person to think about Dementors. If you, don't, if you haven't watched Harry Potter or read it, look up Dementors on YouTube really quick and watch an excerpt. You'll get the idea. You'll have that mental image. And then think, okay, what are the Dementors in my life? And can I go ahead and move those things out of my orbit so that I can get on with getting on and evolve my life forward? So I'd encourage you to think about that. We are 50 minutes into the Q&A today. I'm gonna wait just a few more seconds to see if any other questions come in. And if not, the question about her own pregnancy and speaking to that because it's an outstanding question. Questions, as always, next week. As I said, in a few weeks, we're going to turn this over to members only, but I've wanted to be joining you and uh, making this an opportunity for you to get your questions answered and to move your health forward. My coaching schedule is open. I'm running a spring juice feast. Um, starting later on this month, I think it's around the 27th, um, but take a look on Juice Feasting personal coaching to stay on point and make the most of every day of your Juice Feast. Consider retaining me and having me in your corner to keep you on point and make the most of your Juice Feast and set the stage for your health and the stages ahead. Um, as you design for your better health and a better life. I would love to work with you. I've been doing it for almost 20 years now. I've coached thousands of people and my coaching schedule is open. It will be a group juice feast that I'm doing for the spring. So when I do those, I'm also having Sunday group calls where we entertain a topic. I go over how each person is doing on their juice feast. I run question and answer and it's a really good round table discussion among people who are actively juice feasting right there at the time. So look forward to meeting with you. If you're interested in doing that, you can look at our coaching section on the site and you can register through my page there. Again, thank you for being on. Thank you for submitting all of your excellent questions. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week. I'll see you in the motivation group in the green room. Bye everybody.